बाकी लोग कहा है यस सर बाकी लोग क्यों नहीं ज्वाइन किया अभी तक सर एक बार बोलता हूँ मैं बोलो सब ज्वाइन करेंगे सर एक बार लेक्चर्स तो बचे ना वो आज अपलोड कर देना हाँ? जो वीडियो है ना लेक्चर वाले वो आज अपलोड कर देना मतलब आज तक के आवाज क्लियर नहीं है फिर से बोलो सर जो वीडियोस है ना वो अपलोड कर देना सर लेक्चर्स उससे कुछ नहीं होता आपको अटेंडेंस भी तो लगानी होती है क्लास में नहीं आओगे तो कैसे काम चलेगा आज तो इसलिए बच्चों को एक बार आप ये भी बोल दो कि अटेंडेंस कब आते हैं ये सब वीडियो वीडियो अपलोड करना बंद कर दूंगा मैं फिर तुम लोगों की फिर एग्जाम में सबके गलत होंगे आंसर आपको क्लास में रहना जरूरी है भाई इस तरह से कैसे इंजीनियरिंग करोगे पार्ट टाइम इंजीनियरिंग नहीं होती है नुकसान आप लोग का अगर क्लास में ढंग से नहीं पढ़ोगे तो टूडे वी विल स्टार्ट विद द ओवरऑल मैकेनिकल एनर्जी बैलेंस Okay, so till last class we were on the, we have studied the microscopic balance. So to, from today we will start with the macroscopic balance. So what is the difference between the microscopic balance and macroscopic balance? In microscopic balance we will study the phenomena of fluid at a local point of the channel. Okay, so suppose the fluid is flowing inside a pipe. So the local points what is happened that we were studying in the microscopic balance. So suppose this is a point. So at this point, what is the velocity? What is the pressure that you can calculate from the microscopic balance? Then you can average out it, or you can integrate it for the overall system. Okay. So the basic problem with microscopic balance that the mathematics is slightly difficult, as well as, well as you cannot solve the problem for the uh, easy. You cannot solve the problem very easily by for the turbulent flow. For uh, for the laminar flow, you can solve the problem. Uh, easily, but for the turbulent flow, the problem becomes uh, very much complicated. So, for most of the times, because in industry, in the other purpose, generally the fluid is the uh, fluid flows in the turbulent region only. So, we will use the macroscopic balance. So, in the macro macroscopic balance, we will do the overall balance of the system. Instead of doing the microscopic balance at a local point, we will do the balance for the overall system. Okay. So, suppose this is a pipeline. or we can make a slightly different diagram not horizontal pipeline it is a inclined pipeline like this this is point 1 this is point 2 so the velocity at the point 1 is v1 so here velocity means the average velocity not the not the local velocity 
so how to calculate v1 suppose here the volumetric flow rate is q1 here volumetric flow rate is q1 and the cross section area of the pipe is a1 so v1 equal to q1 divided by a1 okay so this is how you have to calculate the average velocity so v1 is the average velocity at the middle of point the at the center of the, the, the circle the velocity should be higher highest at the uh, uh, walls the velocity should be zero in between you have the parabolic uh, from your velocity um, uh, varies as a parabolic function of the radius but you can take the average velocity of v1 average okay so this is the average velocity it can be represent v1 average okay similarly at the point 2 the average velocity of the fluid is v2 average so this is again the average out the velocity to the whole cross sectional area okay this is not a local point here pressure is p1 here pressure is p2 okay the uh, elevation at this point elevation is z1 from the ground this point elevation is z2 from the ground this is the elevation from the ground Z1 and Z2. These are these are the difference between the ground height. Okay, P1 and P2 are the pressure. Now the density. Suppose fluid is a is a non-compressible fluid and density is constant rho. This is a constant value of the density. Then you can use the Bernoulli equation to solve the problem. So what is the Bernoulli equation? In this case, so Bernoulli equation can be written as. One by two alpha v two square average v v two average square minus v one average square plus g in bracket z two minus z one. Plus p two minus p one divided by rho. Rho is the density. Plus summation of f. F are the friction losses. Different type of friction losses. Plus w s equal to zero. Okay, so this is the generalized Bernoulli equation. <coughs> okay. So basically, this equation represent the uh, an energy balance for the system. Okay, so this is called the Bernoulli generalized Bernoulli equation. For mechanical energy balance. Here the assumption is what are the basic assumption in the Bernoulli equation? First, your energy is not converting. Mechanical energy is not converting in the thermal energy due to the simple courses. The density is constant. Density is not varying. The second assumption. So these are the major assumption in this equation. Okay. Now here delta F is the friction losses. So due to the friction, here when you are when you include the delta F, delta F are the friction losses. Okay. So due to the friction, some of the mechanical energy is converting in the thermal energy. So that friction losses may occur due to the different different types of uh, defects or different different type of the uh, geometrical structure of the flowing channel. So that we will discuss in uh, detail. And that W S is the work done by the pump. Okay. So suppose there is a pump situated in between the line. So in this in, uh, in between these two points, there is a pump. 
which will converting the thermal mechanical and the electrical energy or the mechanical energy to the pressure energy so that will increase the overall mechanical energy of the fluid system okay so you have to add the wf okay so this is equal to zero okay so this is the generalized equation now we will focus on the friction losses what are the friction losses in the system so here friction losses summation of f okay so there are two different types of the friction losses can be characterized or classified in the two different types first is the major friction loss and second is the minor friction loss okay so friction losses can be characterized as major friction loss and second is minor friction loss okay so what are the difference between the major friction loss and minor friction loss basically the major friction loss is due to the skin skin friction so what is the skin friction skin friction nothing we have already discussed about the skin friction during the uh, derivation of the pipe flow uh, uh, derivation of the pipe flow in the microscopic balance so basically because the no slip boundary conditions the fluid velocity is zero at the Surface at the surface of the wall, okay, solid wall, okay. So inside the pipeline, due to the no slip boundary condition, the fluid velocity is zero at the surface of the walls. Here, okay, and maximum at the center of the pipeline. So basically, the, due to the friction of the pipeline, there is a drag of the fluid which is flowing. Okay, so that is called the that drag is called the skin friction. Okay. so this is the major loss in the system so basically due to the pipeline due to the uh, skin of the pipeline which is uh, uh, which exerted the uh, friction force on the flowing fluid so there is a loss of mechanical energy into the thermal energy that is called the friction skin friction okay so the major loss is also called the skin friction loss okay now the minor losses include the different types of losses so we will discuss what are the type different type of losses in the minor losses in minor losses this is the major loss skin friction in friction loss then you have the minor losses so there are different uh, region or there are different categories of the minor losses okay so minor loss what are the conditions or what are the situations when the minor loss occur in the pipeline suppose first is when the flow direction is changing you know first is when flow direction is changing Okay, suppose you have the ninety degree bend in the flowing channel. 
your pipeline suddenly move, uh, moves in the 90 degree or you have the 180 degree of, uh, you have the 360 degree of the u turn suppose your uh, the fluid is flowing in the 360 degree band or you have the 45 degree of turn So these are the very common term, especially the 90 degree turn is very common term in the uh, hydraulic fitting, hydraulic systems. So whenever you have this type of change in fl flow direction, some of the energy will convert in the mechanical energy, mechanic, some of the mechanical energy will, will convert in the thermal energy. Why? Because due to the, uh, the randomness or due to the, uh, uh, due to the, uh, the, when you change the direction, some of the turbulence will create it in the system. So that turbulence will convert the mechanical energy to the thermal energy. Okay, so this is a one type of minor loss which will occur in the system whenever you have the, the band or you are changing the direction of flow. Some of the energy will convert in the thermal energy will convert in the mechanical. The mechanical energy will convert in the thermal energy. Okay, so that is the one type of minor loss. The second. Due to different type of fittings, so basically, pipe wall is very smooth wall. And in the pipeline, suppose there you are join, you are joined uh, the two pipes are joined joined together by using a type of fitting. Okay, so this is the joint between between the two pipes. Okay, so this is a type of gasket or flange which are using to join the two pipes. So because of this gasket, there is a friction in the flow. Okay, so this will create the extra friction because the pipeline is a smooth. Okay, but the, whenever this type of fitting will come, it will create the ex, extra friction or extra disturbance in the flow. Okay, and due to this disturbance, some of the mechanical energy will convert in the thermal energy. Okay, so that will create the friction loss. That is the second type of minor loss due to the, the different types of fittings, which will preserve, uh, in which you have to use, which you have to include inside the uh, uh, inside the hydraulic system. Okay, that will disturb the flow rate and create some of, and convert some of the mechanical energy to the thermal energy. The third time, third type. <coughs> Whenever you have the enlargement or the reduction of the pipe diameter. Okay, so suppose you have a pipe diameter like this. This is the big pipe, then again suddenly it will uh, join with a small pipe. Okay, you are changing the pipe diameter. So whenever you do change the diameter, some of the energy will, some of the mechanical energy will convert in the thermal energy due to the again due to the disturbance created due to the change of the uh, velocity of the fluid. And due to this, some of the energy will convert in the mechanical energy, thermal energy, and you have the friction loss that is called the enlargement friction loss. Similarly, this is the reduction and similarly you also have the enlargement. Suppose so this is a small pipe and we, again this small pipe is joined with the bigger pipe. Okay, so fluid is flowing in this direction, in this case fluid is flowing in this direction. So this is the re 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 reduction and this is the enlargement of the flow. So whenever you change the pipe diameter, there is a loss of the energy and that is also the create that has also created the uh, minor losses. So majorly minor losses occurs due to whenever you change the direction of flow, whenever the, the 
any type of fitting present in the system or whenever you change the diameter of pipeline so these three are the cause of the major cause of the minor losses and the major losses occurs due to the friction uh, skin friction so skin friction is nothing but uh, the uh, because the wall solid wall of the pipeline is is in present in the stationary condition so that will drag the flowing fluid and you know? so that will exert a drag force on the flowing fluid so this, this is a type of friction that is called the skin friction it will convert some of the mechanical energy in the thermal energy so that will the and how to measure the conversion of the mechanical energy in the in the thermal energy in every cases in the flowing system the mechanical energy is represented by the pressure energy okay so you will find the pressure loss suppose you are taking a horizontal pipeline so in the horizontal pipeline if fluid is flowing from one point to the other point so the pressure loss should be <coughs> based on the microscopic balance which you have calculated suppose here pressure is p1 here pressure is p2 so the pressure loss should be should be according to the hausen fosli equation and you know, which is which you have developed based on the microscopic balance but but whenever you have the, uh, the friction loss so it will create the hmm. so whenever you have the friction loss so it will create the extra pressure drop inside the system okay so theoretically you will find the how you will based on the material which you have used and based on the flowing channel of the uh, flowing uh, characteristic like it is a laminar flow or turbulent flow or other okay so based on that you can determine at which range your flow is present okay so now the next uh, task is to calculation of the pressure loss due to the system due to the major and minor friction losses okay so the major and minor friction losses skin friction loss or the other type of losses okay so you have to calculate have the uh, overall pressure loss or the friction loss in the system basically you have to calculate delta f sigma f so sigma f is the summation of major loss plus minor losses so first we will calculate the major losses or skin friction losses Okay, so we have already done this uh, derivation before using the microscopic balance. So we will just repeating the same thing for calculation of the major losses. You have to define a factor that is called the friction factor. Okay, so major loss is calculated based on the friction factor. and how the friction factor is defined we had done this after the uh, derivation of the pipe flow problem in the newtonian fluid friction factor is defined as a uh, tau w divided by 1 by 2 rho v average square okay so where tau, this is the ratio of the friction factor with a dimensionless number which provide idea about the magnitude of the shear stress okay so how much friction is calculated shear stress is nothing but the friction okay it is defined as the ratio of the shear stress at the wall and the kinetic energy to the overall kinetic energy of the fluid okay 
So friction factor is the ratio. is the ratio of shear stress shear stress is nothing but the shear force or the friction force at the wall shear stress at the wall and the kinetic energy of the fluid okay so tau w can be written as tau w equal to minus in bracket minus tau r z at r equal to capital r for pipe flow problem you remember this formula we had done this experiment uh, this well we have solved this before so tau rz for tau rz you need the vz so vz velocity equal to vz max in bracket 1 minus r square by 1 minus r square small r square by capital r square Okay, now just calculate dvz by dr at r equal to r. At r equal to capital R, you will get minus two vz max divided by r. Okay, now you have to calculate the shear stress value. Okay. so shear stress considered as a momentum flux that is written as shear stress value can be written as dvz by tau rz at r small r equal to capital r that is equal to minus mu dvz by dr at r equal to capital r now substitute the value from this equation suppose this is equation number 1 substitute the value from equation number 1 you will get that equal to plus 2 mu vz average vz max divided by capital r that is the tau w r okay now you can substitute the value of vz max from the original equation you will get in terms of the pressure difference so that is that we had done before so when you substitute the tau w equal to tau rz at r equal to capital r that is equal to 2 mu vz max divided by r now substitute the value of the uh, value of the vz max from the equation so it is equal to p not minus pl that is the pressure difference across the pipe p not minus pl multiplied by r square divided by divided by 4 mu l and this r will remain same so this r will be cancelled out Two will be cancelled out from here. It will remain two. Mu will be cancelled out. So you will get P not minus P L divided by two L multiplied by R. This is the value of tau W. Okay. Now you have to calculate. You have to just substitute the value in the original equation. So when you substitute the value in the original equation, you will get F equal to friction factor equal to tau W. Divide by one by two. Rho v z average 
square. Okay, now substitute the value of tau w from the previous uh, section. So that is p naught minus p n multiplied by r divided by two n divided by one by two rho v z average. One v z average will remain same. And instead of one multiplied by v z average. Okay, now this v z average you have to substitute value of the one v z average in terms of the in terms of pressure. Okay, so that this pressure will be cancelled out. Okay, so because this is a dimensionless number, we are trying to develop some correlation based on the based on the, the, the Reynolds number. Okay, so uh, we have to substitute the value of v z average here. So p naught minus p n divided by two n. R divided by one by two rho v z average multiplied by value of the v z average. So v z average can be written as p naught minus p n divided by eight mu n multiplied by r square. Okay, now the values will be cancelled out. This L will be cancelled out. This R will be cancelled out. This P naught minus P L will be cancelled out. Okay, so you will get this two will be cancelled out again. So you will get two eight mu divided by rho R V average. Okay, now you can convert R R in the diameter d. So it will equal to fan friction factor equal to sixteen by rho r not r rho d d by mu. Rho d d average divided by mu. So this quantity will become Reynolds number. You will get sixteen by n r e. The Norse number. So this is the value of the friction factor for the laminar fluids. Okay, so that is the simple friction factor. There is one more term term that is called the fanning friction factor. Okay, so there is a small difference between the simple friction factor and the fanning friction factor. <coughs> In the fanning friction factor. This is the friction factor for laminar flow. So you have the fanning friction factor, which is developed by the scientist fanning. So in fanning friction factor, F is defined as not sixteen, sixty-four divided by n R E. Okay, so that is only difference. Okay, so basically the fanning friction factor is equal to the uh, four times of the friction factor. Okay, so the instead of sixteen, we are using the sixty-four. That is the fanning friction factor. Okay, so both are the same thing. Only the difference is the calculation. Okay, so this is the sixty-four divided by L R, fanning friction factor. Okay, now this is for the turbulent flow. This is for the laminar flow. If you have the turbulent flow. If you have the turbulent flow, then the calculation will be totally different. So, how you calculate in the turbulent flow? In the turbulent flow, the shear, the value of the friction factor or the fanning friction factor will depend upon the uh, uh, depend upon the Reynolds number as well as the Surface friction or surface uh, that is called the uh, uh, that is called the surface roughness. Okay, so roughness factor. 
it will depend upon the roughness factor of the pipeline as well as the reynolds number okay so for turbulent flow suppose this is a pipeline so when you enlarge this area you will find that this is like this area is basically the rough enough okay so this roughness factor will incorporate in the friction in the turbulent flow okay so how you calculate the roughness factor the roughness factor is equal to the thickness of the roughness that is called the xi divided by diameter of the pipeline that is calculated from the d so xi by d is the roughness factor so once you know the roughness factor you can use the moody's chart okay so moody's chart are the standard charts which are used to calculate the friction factor in the turbulent flow region okay so this is the log log graphs so these charts are available with the, in in the books also in the data books different data books of uh, the fluid mechanics in every book of fluid mechanics you will find the moody's chart so x axis you have the reynolds number which is also in the uh, which is also in the uh, logarithmic scale like this now in y axis you have the reynolds number uh, you have the friction factor f which is also in the logarithmic scale so basically this number this graph represent the correlation between the two two friction dimensionless numbers one is the friction factor second is the is the reynolds number now in the in the laminar region you have the straight line like this so this point is supposed 3000 uh, 2100 reynolds number again up, after this line you don't have any straight line okay so this straight line represent the 64 by nre for the ferry friction factor or 16 by nre for the simple friction factor after this you have the different different curve like this so every curves represent the a surface roughness factor okay so suppose this represent the psi by d equal to 0.03 this represent the psi by d equal to 0.0003 this represent the psi by d equal to 0.0001 this represent the Xi by D equal to almost zero means smooth pipes or tubes. Okay, so in this way you have the more than ten lines, fifteen lines based on the how much big graph you are using. You have the more lines, more accurate results you can predict. Okay, so what you have to do first calculate the Reynolds number of fluid based on the velocity, based on the density, viscosity, and diameter of pipeline. First calculate the Reynolds number, then. Calculate the roughness factor. Generally, it is given in the pro problem based on the based on the uh, material you are using. The uh, roughness factor is fixed. Suppose you are using a pipeline which has the roughness factor 0.03, and you are working at the one one leg Reynolds number range. So just go to one leg to the this point. Roughness factor 0.03. Then move in the horizontal direction. you will get the value of the friction factor okay so once you know the value of the friction factor you can calculate the pressure loss due to the friction factor okay so in this way this uh, term will used okay now this is about the moody's chart 
similarly you might have the different type of correlation also okay so there are different type of correlations which are also available to calculate the friction, uh, loss of the flow due to the friction okay so you might have the different different type of losses due to the different different categories so how to correlate the pressure loss to the friction factor so there is a simple formula so delta p by rho the loss due to the pressure loss due to the friction factor that can be calculated by delta p by f so friction loss skin friction loss can be represented by capital f small f uh, as a subscript that is equal to delta p f this is the pressure drop divided by rho rho is the density that is equal to 4 multiply by f f is the fanning friction factor multiply by delta l divided by d delta l by d is the ratio of the length by diameter multiplied by v square divided by 2 this is the uh, pressure loss due to the pressure loss due to the uh, friction factor or you can rearrange this equation little bit so you will get delta p by l pressure drop per unit length that is equal to 4f multiplied by rho divided by d multiply by v square by 2 so this formula is more famous okay so uh, always you are calculating the pressure loss per unit length okay so that can be calculated from this formula so you know if you first you have to calculate the velocity then you have to calculate the reynolds number once you know the reynolds number use modis chart if it is a turbulent flow you can use the modis chart if it is in the laminar flow you can directly use 64 by nre to calculate the friction factor once you know the friction factor just substitute the value of the friction factor f in this equation here v is again the velocity rho by d is the density and the diameter of the pipeline you can get by delta p by l delta p by l means the pressure drop per per unit length due to the friction uh, skin friction uh, losses okay so from here you can calculate the loss major loss from the equation from the in the pipeline okay then you have the minor losses so friction loss in expansion contraction and pipe fitting these three are the minor losses
the friction losses due to the expansion contraction of the fire pitting. Okay, so first we will see how to calculate the friction loss due to the sudden uh, enlargement or expansion of the pipe. So sudden enlargement or the expansion of the flowing channel. Okay. So whenever you have the sudden enlargement of the flowing channel, the, the friction loss can be calculated as because I am making a diagram so you can understand better. This is the enlargement. Fluid is flowing in this direction. So here the cross-sectional area of pipeline here is A1. This is the cross-sectional area of pipeline. The velocity is V1 here. Here cross-sectional area will become A2. Here the area is become a2 okay now the friction loss can be calculated as h e x equal to in bracket 1 minus a1 square a1 by a2 square bracket close square multiply by v1 square divided by 2 alpha this alpha i will explain what is this alpha Okay, now this can be represented by KEX V1 square by 2 alpha. Okay, then the unit is joules per kg. Okay, now this is the friction loss due to the sudden enlargement. Okay, so where KEX equal to, this is the friction loss factor in this case. And friction loss factor is equal to 1 minus A1 by A2 whole square. This is the friction loss factor. Okay. Sim similarly, if you have the sudden contraction in the cross sectional area of flowing system. Okay, in this case, you can write at E equal to 0 0.55 multiply by in bracket 1 minus A, A2 divided by A1 bracket close V2 square divided by 2 alpha. Okay, so this is the friction factor due to the sudden contraction. Okay, so here you can write Kc equal to 0 0.55 multiply by 1 minus A2 square divided by A1. A2 by, A, uh, not A2 square, A2 by A1. Bracket close. Okay, so this is the sudden contraction factor. Okay, 
here the velocity is the downstream velocity so basically this is the sudden contraction this looks like this now here v2 is the velocity in the downward direction this is the v2 okay at this point here your surface area is a1 this is a1 here the cross sectional area is a2 okay the velocity at the down downward stream is v2 okay so here the velocity is in the upward stream that you have to remember in this case the velocity is in the downward stream okay so both are the different positions okay so these are the loss due to the loss due to the sudden contraction okay now you have the different type of loss due to the different type of fittings and valves okay so there is a table which is given in the book okay so i am writing some of the major values and you can find other values in that table or in the exam it is given to you what are the friction losses due to the different different uh, due to the different different types of fittings or when the flow rate the, when the flow is changing the, the direction of flow is changing okay so this is the table for minor losses due to different types of fittings okay so first is elbow elbow is used for the changing the direction of flow okay so 45 degree elbow so 45 degree elbow will change the direction in the 45 degree elbow 45 degree so the value of kf minor loss factor friction factor that is equal to 0.35 second is elbow 90 degree the value is 0.75 kf value is 0.75 then the t t is used to change the flow in the two direction okay so basically t is basically this type of uh, channel where it, this is the inlet and this is the two outlet outlets you know? so when you convert the flow in the two two when you divided the flow in the two different channels okay so the value of kf is 1 then the couplings couplings are used to join the two pipes coupling and unions so coupling and unions so these are basically the smooth joints so you will you have the kf value 0.04 now fifth is gate wall so gate wall might be the full open or the half open so if you have the full open gate wall at that time the value is 0.17 if you have the half open gate wall the value is 4.5 similarly sixth the globe wall globe wall has the similar purpose as the gate wall to start and stop the flow it can slightly regulate the flow also so you have the full open globe uh, globe wall and the half open globe wall the values are zero uh, if the full open grade uh, globe wall values are 0.6.0 and for half open globe wall values are 
So this create globe ball create is to create a lot of pressure drop. Then you have the angle ball wide open. The value of KF is 2.0. Then you have the check walls. So check walls, ball type check walls, and the swing type check wall. The ball type check wall has the value of 70, which is very high. The pressure loss in the ball type check walls are very high. Then swing type check walls. In the swing type check walls, the value is 2.0, which is uh, quite low. Okay. Then you have the water meter disc. So if the water meter disc is present in the system, then the value of KF is 7. So for water meter disc, the value is 7.0. Okay, so these are the value of the friction coefficient for different different KF friction coefficient for different different type of minor losses. Okay, so suppose in your pipeline you have the <coughs> two elbows, one T, one gate wall. So you have to just add all the values and you have to take the all the values and multiply with V square by two. Okay, the friction factor. So basically, in this formula, you will find that this is the Kc. Kc is multiplied by v square by 2 alpha. So here also, you have to just take the values and multiply with the v square by 2. That means you will get the exact answer. Okay, so now we can write the summation of all errors. Okay, so summation of all errors can be written as. Sigma F that should be equal to in bracket 4 multiplied by F. F is the fanning friction factor which you can calculate from the Moody's graph divided by delta L by D. Delta is the length of the pipeline, D is the diameter of the pipeline plus KEX the friction factor due to the expansion plus Kc, the friction factor due to the contraction plus Kf, friction factors due to the Kf1 plus Kf2, friction factor due to the dash dash up to the plus Kfn. These are the friction factor due to the fittings multiply by V square by 2 alpha. Okay. So these are the value of sigma f, total loss of the pressure due to the different type of fittings, walls, as well as the pipelines. Okay, so whatever the solid boundaries are present in the dire in the uh, direction of the flowing fluid and in the place of the flowing fluid, so that will create a type of friction, and that friction can be calculated from this formula. So this is the pressure loss. Okay, <coughs> in the system. Now, what is the alpha? in this case okay so you can find in the original equation also but the equation we use the term alpha here again and now here we use also use the term alpha okay so alpha is a correction factor Okay, if the value of alpha is not given in the problem, then for laminar flow, for laminar flow, alpha equal to 0 0.5 and for turbulent flow,
alpha is almost equal to nearly equal to 1 okay it is like 0.95 or 0.96 also sometimes so if it if the value of alpha is not given in the problem you can use for laminar flow alpha equal to 0.5 and for turbulent flow alpha is 1 so what is alpha basically kinetic energy should be calculated at the local point okay so what we are doing suppose this is the pipeline so at the center of the pipeline uh, pipeline the velocity is maximum at the uh, boundary velocity is zero so when you can you are calculating the kinetic energy v1 suppose the at the center of the pipeline velocity is v1 at the boundary it is like v infinite which is nearly equal to zero v0 which is nearly equal to zero so what you are doing you are calculating the v1 square v0 square and then similarly in between points you are calculating the kinetic energy at every point and then you are taking the surface integral of the kinetic energy and then you are with the, doing the uh, average out and then basically you are average outing the kinetic energy so here for taking that you are taking the average of the velocity square so there is a correction factor which should come and whenever you are doing the average out a quantity and that is also a square of some other quantity so you have to take a correction factor so these are the correction factor so there is a thumb rule for the laminar flow it is 0.5 for turbulent flow it is nearly equal to 1 okay so you have to use this correction factor alpha okay you have to remind the correction factor come in that sigma f as well as in the kinetic energy okay here as again and here again sigma f can be calculated from this formula okay so this is the formula of sigma f so it is the summation of the spin friction factor friction factor due to the sudden expansion friction factor due to the sudden contraction then the friction factors due to the different type of fittings present in the system multiply by v square velocity divided by 2 alpha okay you will get the sigma f once you know the sigma f you can calculate the overall power requirement in the pump w is the power requirement in the pump okay so once you know the all values you can calculate how much what is the what should be the size of the pump it is one horse power two horse power five horse power what should be the size of the pump this is the power requirement in power again when you calculate the power requirement from the bernoulli equation this equation shows you the theoretical power requirement okay so actually pump has its efficiency so the efficiencies of pumps are generally the 0.8 80% so it will convert the 80% of the electrical energy in the mechanical energy okay generally pumps have the efficiency of the 80% they converted the 80% of the electrical energy in the mechanical energy so if your power requirement is the 2 horse power so you have to divide 2 horse power divided by 0 0.8 you will get the actual size of pump and now what is the what should be the actual size of the pump okay so in this way you can calculate what should be the size of pump okay so we will solve the problem in next few classes related to this derivation yes sir yes, sir. now we will solve some numerical problem in the next class is solve that okay or this is from the zinc published book i think i have uh, shared with you the zinc published book mai check kar leta hu share kiye ke nahi kiya there are two books which i am following first is the uh, here is, uh, i have shared on the 7th january first is the mckeb smith unit operations and second is the transport you know processes and the unit operations that is, that is from the zinc published so dono book mein mil jayega aapko ye wala part zinc oblish mein jyada acche se diya hua hai okay so if you want to follow even the numerical which we will solve in the classroom that will from the zinc oblish book they have the much more numericals related to this this uh, topic okay so we will solve we will follow the zinc oblish book for this topic theek hai next class se kuch numerical solve karte hain okay sir ha kisi kuch puchna hai aur No sir. Hello, Tika.